Alright, it will be time to take a look at the next carrier. This is the Chimera. I already have experience with this ship. After all, a Chimera is the first carrier kill that our corp did make a couple months ago. So, uh, will be interesting to see how this ship runs. This is the second most voted carrier. The first one is still the Nithogur with over 50% of votes. This ship has 19% of votes. So, uh, I'm very curious to see how this ship uh, will run. Now, will be time to take a look at the ship stats. The roll bonus will give plus 400% and this link activation time. Jump drive is available, it can fit command burst modules and plus 100% command burst effective range. So basically the same roll bonus as the previous carrier. Light fighter operation will give you plus 7.5% light fighter explosion velocity, which is really nice. Carrier command bonus, parallel level will give you plus 4% shield resistance, plus 1% shield command burst strength, plus 1% shield command burst activation time. So the Chimera is a shield tank carrier and overall uh, the shield resistances look very similar to the one that we have on the Mimeter carrier. Now no high slots, uh, 3 fighter slots, 5 medium, 8 low slots, 3 combat and 3 engineering rigs, a very small cargo hull capacity. Still uh, the fuel tank is lower than the fuel tank of a dreadnought, 474,000 hit points. The Chimera is primary, primarily a shield tank, so that means do not attempt to uh, make a armor tank Chimera. That would be very cursed and hopefully I'll never see a armor tank Chimera, that would be, that would be bad. Now, uh, 60,000 capacitors, almost 61,000, capacitor recharge rate 1860 seconds, recharge rate per second 81.88, it can lock 8 targets, signature radius 9.3 kilometers, Scan resolution 60 meters, flight velocity 88 meters per second, which is a little bit slower than the Mimatar Dreadnought. After all, the Mimatar Carrier is uh, actually the fastest, I believe. Warp speed 1.5 astronomical units per second, which is comparable to the other carriers and dreadnoughts, and this thing is also pretty massive and pretty slow. So we don't expect these things to be uh, very fast, after all this is a capital ship and they are very, very slow. Now let's take a look on the fit. So uh, the part 1 of the Chimera's build will be focused mostly on the DPS and this current build uh, has a little bit of tank and a little bit of DPS, so this is basically a balanced build, 4.2000 fighter DPS with 500 km range, 3 adaptives, 2 capacitor batteries, dual shield boosters, 1 afterburner, 807,000 hit point is the overall defense. Here you can take a look at the extra resistances that uh, you get from the skill, capacitor 1 minute and 47 seconds and everything else is roughly the same, the speed after the skills is 170 meter per second, jump the jump range is 5.08 light years, which is nice, really good. I have the shield command burst module equipped and here we can take a look at the um, effects overall, really nice. The extra resistance is always very helpful, we can make carriers to be extremely tanky. The command burst modules are really, really helpful for, uh, for carriers, dual, capacitor, dual capital capacitor batteries. Now if you don't have a couple of kidneys to, uh, to sell for the rigs, this is basically the ideal build for the DPS, dual burst and one collision for the combat rigs, and of course the engineering rigs are focused on capacitor, after all uh, the, tank, the tank on carriers is good, however the dreadnoughts are still a little bit more tanky. Now if you have couple kidneys to sell then you can easily go with rig integrations. This is the build that I would personally use. Again a mix between fighter firepower and fighter burst radiation. 
And of course, the um, third rig has fighter range, which is, I think, kind of pointless, but I, would, I was very curious to see how much range I can get. 578 kilometers is the current fighter uh, max range. The engineering rigs also have rig integrations, both focused on maximum possible capacitor performance, increased the capacitor recharge rate and the overall capacitor volume, which is so far, uh, it increased by 14 seconds. Well, it, it does have the effect in the longer battles. Now the fit that I personally like to use on carriers is this one with dual damage mods and one micro web drive guide. The damage mods are active modules, you can activate them and they will have the constant damage boost, while the micro web drive is a semi-active module. It has a 60 second cooldown, while the active time is 20 seconds, but it's very useful. Now let's take a look at the DPS with the current build. With one damage mod, it's 5.1 thousand DPS, which is really nice. A little bit lower than the Mimotar carrier. With the second damage mod active, the DPS is 5.6 thousand, which is still really good. Almost uh, like the, almost like the Dreadnought with full-on tank. 65, 75, 79, and 83 uh, percent resistances. I use explosive and uh, EM fighters. That's the combination that works really well. The Immortal fighters go after the armor and hull, while the Templars go after the shield. And of course, Templars are a little bit slower than the Minmatar fighters. That's to be expected. With the micro web drive guide, the velocity is 6.4 thousand, which is really nice. And on the Templars, 6.1 thousand, almost the same, a couple hundred meters per second slower, slower, which is not bad. Uh, after all, the Mimatar, the Mimatar carrier has the fastest fighters and overall uh, that's something that is very special for that ship. Now, just for fun, let's see how much DPS I can get out of this ship with five of these damage mods. This is a build that I would not recommend. I'm doing this just for fun to see what's the maximum possible uh, DPS on this thing. Six, 6,000 DPS with one. 6,000 DPS with the second one. Uh, what's happening here? Something very suspicious going on. 6,000 with the third one, okay, that's weird. 6.2 thousand with the, with the fourth one. And with the last one, the DPS is 6.2 thousand, 6,289.76, which is a little bit lower than the um, Mimotar carrier. That one almost had 8,000, but uh, it's still uh, really good. Now the reason why the um, DPS didn't wasn't accurate uh, was because I did dock with the modules running and that did mess up the the DPS window. And yes, this is the maximum possible DPS. Still really nice. Just had to verify in case something did glitch out. And so far everything seems to be working in optimal order. Let me just take a couple screenshots. I always do that with any new ship. We can also go with uh, this build with one capacitor battery, dual damage mods, one micro web drive guide, one shield booster, and one afterburner. Also a very solid build that I personally really like. You can also uh, use dual micro web drive guides and the effect actually will double uh, if you activate both at the same time which means you can get some very very quick fighters i think on the mimotar carrier i can get the fighters to go around 20 kilometers per second which is ridiculously fast while maintaining around 7000 dps and that is indeed very impressive now uh, the mimotar fighters go 11,000, almost 12,000 meters per second, which is very, 
Very nice. And the Templars go around 11,400 meters per second, which is also really fast and really nice. You can also use target painters, because the fighters actually have explosion velocity and explosion radius. If you want to improve that, you can easily uh, use target painters. It works exactly the same uh, as with missiles. All right, well let's have fun. Let's have some fun with uh, with this carrier. Okay, let me uh, line myself towards the station. These things are very slow, by the way. Don't be surprised by uh, by the slow nature of these bricks. Network mode has been enabled. The network mode on all of these carriers works the same way. You cannot warp once they are activated, but you can move, so you still have some form of mobility on the field. So, uh, last time we did uh, look at these fighters, they are uh, really Really nice, I like the, the little squad, the little beehive, or should I say, hornets have been released. Let me find the Templars. These are not the Templars. Where are my Templars? I don't see them fighting here, although I did launch them at the same time. Oh, there they are. They are actually orbiting the carrier. Well, uh, I guess the Templars did not want to fight, so let me... Let me quickly send them again. They are very slow uh, by default, so uh, you really have to send. You really have to send the fighters with the micro drive guide to reach the target as quickly as possible. And I have to say, the model of fighters looks really nice. They did a good job with the with the graphics of this game. Would be fun if we had a different game mode where uh, we could actually play as the fighters themselves. That would be fun. Maybe in the future, who knows? I'm just I'm just giving some ideas here. Okay, and of course, as expected, uh, they will be going through the storyline ships without a problem. That's a good picture. That's a beautiful picture. And surprisingly, uh, carriers are very efficient at clearing low second counters, even four line missions. Although, I'm not quite sure if, if I would uh, personally uh, go with a carrier inside deep low sec where four line missions spawn. Over here, uh, this is basically my home system, so I don't have to worry about anything. I have uh, the whole fleet nearby, so if anything happens, I can easily uh, call for backup. But for a carrier to be in low in low sec, and for a carrier to run storyline missions, they really have to be very careful. I haven't encountered a carrier in low sec yet. Although I've been told that there are a couple of, of these ships that do run storyline missions. And I can see why. Uh, they're definitely super fast, they're super tanky, and overall uh, very, very hard to tackle. From my personal experience from the previous uh, Dreadnought, from the previous carrier, I mix up Dreadnoughts and carriers quite often because I have been flying Dreadnoughts for, for a full month, maybe even more, so. Uh, each time I talk about a capital ship, the first thing is the the first thing that pops in my mind is the dreadnought, not the carrier. But the fighters are really fast, and they also can track and apply damage to basically anything. That also includes frigates. So even if your frigate has a hundred kilometer point range, even if they have fifteen point strength on on every disruptor. Fighters will reach them, fighters will hit them, and fighters will kill them. Which makes these things very safe uh, from tackle. The problem occurs when you have a whole fleet that jumps on you, 
and when that whole fleet kills your fighters and then then you are in some then you are in big trouble and that is of course the main threat for carriers a big fleet that can jump on them for a carrier i think a lot of uh, big corporations and big alliances will drop a will drop a dreadnought so uh, it is highly risky for a lone carrier in low sec but i'm not saying that it's impossible i'm pretty sure that given the right moment and the right pilots and of course the right situation carriers can farm storyline missions, story missions without a problem am i going to be attempting to do that who knows maybe uh, depends on uh, the <laughs> the amount of isk i have in my wallet these things are very expensive carriers are actually more expensive than dreadnoughts because of the fighters i think every Every, every fighter squad costs like 1.5 to 2 billion not quite sure not not sure if we have faction fighters that probably costs a lot I'm using the normal uh, normal fighters that you already have in the game although not quite sure about the faction fighters 1.4 million is the current effective hit point. Saint 1, 82, and 85. You know, for a full DPS build, the resistances are actually really nice. I can definitely see myself doing 95% 95 resistance tank on uh, on this ship. I think I can do the same thing uh, with the Mimatar carrier. Overall. The potential to make the carrier tanky uh, is is there. Now I've, I've been actually uh, last time I did say that I plan to fly the Mimata carrier for PvP, but uh, I have been recommended to uh, go with the Chimera because the Chimera seems to be more tanky, and I, I still have to do the tank build on the on the Mimata carrier. And I'm very, very excited to see the difference in the tank on these two ships. In the end, I think I will pick the carrier with more tank. Although, although having good DPS is actually also very important. Uh, good DPS could be important uh, if uh, we plan to destroy a small camp or if we expect a big fleet to to land and the carriers would go uh, after the small ships while the dreadnoughts will go after the big ships basically a good uh, good cooperation between uh, these two capital ships is going to be very important and i'm definitely looking forward to see how that will work inside of a fleet because on paper uh, it looks really nice and the idea that i have seems to be uh, pretty solid so far but uh, the execution of that idea will be even more important so uh, i'll definitely have to see how that uh, will how that will end up now uh, when you are returning the fighters towards your carrier then it's also important that you use the micro objective guide because these things are very very slow uh, basically like a balgorn going with the micro objective which is around one kilometer per second and it will take some time uh, for the fighters to dock inside of the carrier. So always uh, using the micro drive mod will be will be very helpful. Uh, there is the carrier. The fighters are about to dock, and then I can go in no sec. I'm very curious to see how this thing will behave in in no sec. So. Uh, I have jumped in, there is the low sec gate, and well, uh, last time I uh, did talk about having no sec missions, well, I did get a no sec mission, surprisingly somehow, not quite sure how that happened, but here I am, 
and I'm uh, warping towards the location. That is a very long warp. Don't forget that these things are slow in warp. They are actually slower than a battleship. They're roughly around the same speed as a dreadnought, but yeah, they are still bricks. And when you warp from one gate to the other gate, or from a gate towards mission, always run one cycle with your micro drift or afterburner, because that will cut the warp time from 38 seconds or 48 seconds to around 8 seconds, which is already comparable uh, to a battleship that also works with a dreadnought. I basically use that little trick every day because it saves a lot of time. Okay, well let's quickly uh, clear up this mission. Let's go after the small ships first. In Nullsec, always primary the small ships. Kill what can keep your ship pointed. If you are not pointed then you are free to warp away. Not quite sure if we have uh, warp course tabs on the capital ships. I think we don't have that at the moment. Although uh, using a warp core optimizer on a capital ship is weird. Not quite sure if I will ever do that, honestly. I'll, I always love my capacitor, so I always go with capacitor rigs on most of my ships. Including the Balgorn. On the Balgorn, the capacitor rigs actually helped me a lot. Uh, there was one moment where I had around 8 neutralizers on the Balgorn. I was waiting for a carrier to jump in. And I did hold a couple ships. The capacitor did survive. And we were able to destroy uh, the fleet that did take the Balgorn bait. So yeah, uh, capacitor rigs in null are, in my case, for my personal experience, very important. The second most important skill would definitely be speed, although these things are bricks, so sp going speed on, on a carrier, while it might be hilarious, might actually work because you can get some of these ships to go around one kilometer per second. It's a little bit weird, because you're definitely not going to outrun uh, anything. However, it might be useful in uh, some situations. So I guess uh, you have a lot of uh, options, a lot of fit options for for these ships. So, uh, so for clearing the mission without a problem. You know, there is something very satisfying about watching this about watching these fighters floating around. Don't know if uh, you can actually see the fighters explode once they start taking damage or once they, you know, uh, start being shot at. I think that they did make the animation where you could literally see the fighters uh, go down. However, I didn't have the chance to see that yet. And it also looks like the these fighters, Templars, use beam lasers. They don't use pulse lasers. That's interesting. Probably small pulse lasers. Uh, my apologies, small beam lasers. But what's important, they are going through the shields very quickly. I actually like how this runs. You know, you know, carriers are actually very interesting. Uh, wasn't aware how fun they can be, but they are fun. And they're definitely a lot more, uh, I, I would say, a lot more easy to fly than the dreadnoughts, because they are basically like big, big battleships. While the Dreadnought is a very big battleship. If you are flying drone boats, then a carrier would be very familiar. Of course, the fighter mechanic is a little bit different, but uh, personally, I think I really like how fighters work currently. Very, very smooth and overall uh, very effective in combat, which is what what matters the most in the end. This mission is short, I believe, or I'm just clearing everything way too fast. I would still say that uh, if 
Carriers were able to jump in high sec, it would be a whole different game. We would see carriers everywhere. But thankfully they are only in, uh, they're locked basically inside of low sec and no sec. So So that's where you will find them most of the time. And this is the last ship, I think. The Hyperion looks pretty nice. And you can also uh, see how big each fighter is compared to the battleship. Well, uh, that was actually very, very nice, very smooth. Honestly, honestly, very surprised how uh, how smooth these carriers actually work. So uh, let me pick up the the fighters. Let me return to the um, to the station. So, uh, that will be it with part 1 for the Chimera, this was the DPS build. Next time uh, I will go and show you how the tank build on the ship looks. So with that being said, stay safe, fly safe and I'll see you next time.